All right, folks, I'm going to refactor um, this password reset form. It's currently, it's got a couple things I thought would be interesting. So I'm moving from render prop mutations to hooks. Um, and then I'm going to move to a function component with the reset, um, which means that I've got to get rid of this state and this updater and move that to a hook as well. So I thought I'd record myself doing it. Um, let's get at her. So the first thing I want to do here, is take a look at what we've got here. And I guess we got to move it to a, a function first um, because I can't use a hook unless it's an actual function. So make that a function called reset. Um, and that has a props of a reset token. I'll move the prop types down below. Let me make this a bit bigger. That's a bit too big. There we go. And then I want to say reset dot prop types. Okay. Um, now this is going to be broken for a bit because we've got to do that. So state password and confirm password. It's totally fine. We'll get rid of that. Um, the save to state. I'm going to show you a hook I made previously to replace that. Get rid of the render. And that makes it a reset. Okay. Um, now we got to get rid of the this dot props dot reset token and just set it to be reset token. That's nice. Now the next thing is the password. We'll just say Wes and the confirm. It's going to be Wes. We'll obviously change that in a second. Just want to get it working on the page real quick. Um, all right, I guess next thing we need to do is to open up my use form hook. So this is another little hook that we're going to build in the library. And you might say, like, why not use Formic or something like that? Um, because I want to teach how to use custom hooks. And this thing is, what, 23 lines long? And um, it's pretty handy. So not even, 22. So we're going to be using this. And essentially how it works is that um, it's a custom hook that has state internally, you can pass it some initial state. Um, and then that's going to give us an object that we use to control our inputs. Um, and then a, a function to update that piece of state. Um, then we have a handle change function, which will take in an event. And this is going to trigger on change of any input. And when that happens, we take the name of the input and then the value of the input and fold that into our existing state. So we take a copy of existing state with this, and then we fold in the thing that has changed. Um, and then I've got a little reset form method here that is used to reset it back to whatever the initial state was. Um, we might need to make another function to actually clear it because reset is not the same. Uh, all right, so um, let's go in here and import that. So I'm going to say import uh, use form. That's probably not a named. It's probably a default. Yeah. From where did it go? Lib. Okay. And I'll go here. And I'm going to say const, it returns an object. So we want the inputs, the handle change, and we probably also want the reset value. And that is use form. Okay. And then um, we need to hook up our actual input values here. So our first input is the password. Uh, the value is going to be inputs that password actually same as that so it's going to be inputs that password and input dot confirm password um, and then the change will be simply handle change and I think that will break because we don't have a default here yeah yeah it does because what happens is that um, when you tie state to uh, a value of an input um, 
and it's not there, like inputs.password is undefined right now. And then when you immediately change it, you type in there, then inputs.password exists. And that's changing it from um, an uncontrolled component when it was undefined to a controlled component, which is defined. So um, what we'll do here is we'll set some defaults where the password is empty and the confirm password is empty as well. It's probably like another level of abstraction I could do with this so that I don't have to set these defaults. Um, I'll probably look at that later, but or I don't even know if it's totally necessary. Um, so I believe that should... There we go. See, now when I type into here, the state of this form here um, is now being bound. Okay. Um, and then what happens is, again, like I said, when a handle change happens, we take the event, we take the value and the name of that input, fold it into state like that. So that's the first little bit. Um, second bit is this right here, which is this mutation render prop. Uh, I'm going to switch that over to a hook from Apollo. So import uh, use mutation how do you type i can't see with this stupid microphone in my way use mutation i'm thinking about getting one of those like super high quality nfl um ones that goes in front of your mouth um and apparently like it's like a smaller microphone but apparently it's just as good and like then i'd be able to like be britney and moving around here i think that would be cool um it's from a racked hooks apollo apparently this in apollo 3 this will move into a single package so if you're watching this in like three months from now this will probably be changed i'm going to move to apollo 3 once i've just got this all working um then we go here and we'll say const um we want what did we want from this we wanted the reset I guess it's a uh, first argument use what what was it this is when I remove it from cart okay it's an array where the first thing is the the mutation function and the second thing is the data payload with data loading error called all those things that we're used to. So we need an array here, which we call that reset. And then we also needed error and loading. And this will change as well. Um, I'm hoping that suspense comes out um, and we won't have to deal with the errors and the loading in this spot, or I could make it into another component. So don't sweat that. Um, the fact that it's there I know I showed this screenshot once and a lot of people are like why not use this um I'm doing one thing at a time here so we'll get to that uh use mutation and then we pass it the reset mutation as the first arg and then the second arg is an object with things like variables and refetch queries I'm just gonna copy paste that there so variables is an object and refetch queries is a property that is an array of queries that should be refetched. Um, something's broken here. Identify to read. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's just let's leave that as that. I'm probably missing some sort of weird thing. Okay, so now we get rid of this render prop. Get rid of this render prop close. And now I've deleted one thing I shouldn't have. Oh, it's these two. Okay. Now, identified a reset has already been declared. Where? Oh. Oh, look at this. Okay. Um, so I use reset in my use form hook, and I use reset in my 
mutation because it's reset password and reset the form. So uh, luckily in this case, this is array destructuring, so it doesn't matter what I name this thing. But if this was object destructuring and this was also object destructuring, then I would need to rename it um, as I destructure the import to something like reset password or reset form, something like that. But in our case, I can just change this one to uh, reset password and then change that here. All right, now we're rocking. Um, could probably put this into its own hook as well if it's looking a bit long for you, but um, I like to, I'll keep it here. Um, so now when the form submits, we prevent default, we re wait for the password reset, and then I'm just console logging it um, got to figure out what UI I'll show um, in just a second, but let's try it now. So sign in. Um, I'm going to request a password reset. Come on, last pass. Don't need you. Okay. And then I'll go to my mail trap, open it up. And I'm going to password reset it to dogs are cool. Dogs are cool. And reset. Boom. Okay. Value must be eight characters long. Okay. So at least the error showed up. This is another thing I have to figure out is how not to get these ugly ass errors. So. It must be eight characters long. It is eight characters long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so something's happening with our, our data is not being sent over properly. Oh, duh. It's because I'm a hard coded Wes here. Um, all right, so that would be inputs.password. And this one would be inputs.confirm password. And the reason why I'm sending both of these pieces of data to the server is that like I do the I do the check that the password and the confirm are the same on the server. Um, that's done at an API level, not in the browser. I'm sure it could be done in the browser as well, but this is much simpler. Um, all right, so once, 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 once. boom, we got our data back, and inside of that it says your password has been reset. Did it. Cool. Um, so last little bit is like, I want to get this message displayed underneath here. And I believe you can just take a data from the mutation. Like here, I'm like awaiting it and console logging it. But I believe that the mutation will also just hand that to you. So um, I'm going to leave that in just for a second. Um, oh, yeah. We also need to clear out to do. We need to clear the form. I guess I just, let's just do that right now. Done. Um, okay. So reset your password. And then in here we'll say, uh, data dot reset password dot message. And that won't exist, man. I can't wait to get these, this, what is that called? Optional dependency chaining or optional chaining, something like that. So data and, and, Data dot data will be null. So we want to check if we have data and we have oh this is a mess. I will refactor this later, so don't don't at me. I should just add the Babel plugin to get those because that's coming soon. Okay. Uh does that work? Let's try. Uh, now we go here, sign in, reset the password. Okay. It that was fast. West, 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 west. Hey, there we go. Oh, it worked for a second, but now it says reset is not a function. Okay, well, we fixed that one, but this is not a function. Why not? So, use form, we get the reset. Take a look at our use form. Oh, it's called reset form. That's why. 
Uh, so we'll go into our reset and destructure as a reset form in here. Let's try it once more. Sign in. Next boss. Good. putting the prop in there. I think I was just doing that for easy copy paste. There we go. Boom. We reset it and we displayed the message. Cool. So hopefully you learned a thing or two. This is part of my um, advanced react.com course react.com um, I'm currently re-recording it I uh, don't know when it will be out um, the stack what I'm I think the stack that I'm going with is Keystone JS on the the code we were just writing is Next.js um, and there are a couple things sort of being cooked up right now which is Apollo 3 is going to come out I got to wait for that um, next I don't know 10 I think or, or whatever has some new APIs coming out pretty soon that I might need um, for server side rendering. So I gotta gotta wait for that. And I think that's that's probably it. So currently we're recording that. That was one of the big things that I wanted, which is be able to refactor a lot of this stuff into uh, using hooks instead of render props. Hopefully you enjoy that. Like and subscribe. I guess I'm trying to get to 100,000 on YouTube. So let me know what you think. Peace.